I think of the, the, the families of the four scalps that were, that were tragically killed in, in the storm on Wednesday night. I can't imagine, especially those dads on Father's Day today, how they're aching. It's painful. You think about death and family. I, you know, I just shared with you Jason, who's coming to lead us in worship, and how tragically his little sister, two days after she graduated high school, flipped her car and, and literally had her car on top of her for 45 minutes until she passed away. Tragic, as my, my friend got to see that happen. Some of you have experienced that kind of tragedy here. And on and on, I can go on. Cedar Rapids, I mean, they're, it's, it's basically what we were talking about earlier. It's like a, it's the tsunami of the Midwest. They're under complete water. Families evacuated. Tragic source of events all over the place. It's affecting you. It's affecting me. We need to continue to pray for these people that are getting affected by these tragic events. Today's Bible study is tragic in nature in that there's a tragedy that's happening in the church today that Paul addresses here in 1 Corinthians 6 that I would like to address today. <laughs> Again, the book, 1 Corinthians, it's a corrective letter to the church there in Corinth. A lot of tomfoolery going on, like we've talked about. It was a sex-dominated culture. It was, it was pride. There was a lot of spiritual pride going on in the area, which if you look at the root of sin, it doesn't matter what it is. You go to the very nitty-gritty root of your sin and my sin, it's in pride. <laughs> There's a tragedy that's going on in the church today, and I pray as we go through today's Bible study that you'll have an open heart, that I'll have an open heart to take inventory on where we're at. The tragedy is this, and I'll give you a perfect example. I got saved in late 1997. I was in an NFL locker room in 1998 in Miami, and I was a new Christian. I was slowly maturing very immature. And all the guys in the locker room, they knew it. They knew me. Oh, that, that's Todd. That's the, that's the white boy receiver. He's the Jesus freak, you know. And I'd come in and I'd, you know, I'd throw in like some Christian rap and this and that. They knew where I stood. But yet, I was so new in my walk, I was still practicing some of these things that if, if you look today at a life, you say, this is a Christian, but you're involved in this. And so guys were looking in on my life and how I presented Christ. And, and so they're like, well, you're, you, you're doing that, but you're a Christian? Hold on, man. I don't understand. And there was, it was tragic in nature because here's what happens. People are looking on at your life and my life. And there's people that are desiring and seeking truth. Their life, they're looking for it. Man, I have this deep hole in my heart. I'm looking for the answer. And they're looking at you. Man, they're a Christian. I heard, yeah, they go to church. They, they said they were born in, they, they've given their life to Christ. And so here's the thing, and you've heard it said. The only Bible that a lot of people will read is you. The only Bible that the, the culture that I'm in, that I'm walking in, will see, they won't take time to flip that Bible open. It's too big. It's that, oh, you remember that? I was there. I don't want to read that big thing. But you know what I did? I would look at those people that called themselves Christians. And that's the problem that we're going to address today. So I, wanted, I want all of us to take inventory where we are at. What is the picture we're presenting? How are we representing Christ in our culture today? The consequences to not presenting the right picture of Jesus can be tragic. Again, there are souls at stake. This is not just kind of, look, oh, we're just playing around. There are souls at stake for all eternity, heaven and hell. It's reality. And we as believers have been called to represent Christ the right way. Now, it's a process. You come to Christ, it's not like you're Billy Graham the next day. But the key is the heart. I've talked about this several times. Is your heart desiring to grow and continue to mature in Christ and represent Christ the right way? That's the question that we're going to address today.
And that was Paul's heart, man. Again, this church in Corinth, it's, it might be called the, the book of First Omaha. You look around our culture today, all kinds of the same things that were going on in Corinth are going on in our culture today. Tragic. But we as a church, um, my prayer, a purity, presenting Christ the way he needs to be presented and that souls would be saved as they're looking for, they're looking for an answer. 1 Corinthians 6. Let's look at a couple things that were out of order in the Christian church there in Corinth that Paul had to correct. 1 Corinthians 6 and 1 says, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, no, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren? And look at this key verse right here, verse 6. But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Pause right there, your attention please. What's Paul talking about? Verse 6, he says, but brother goes against brother, goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Here's what was happening. If you're a Christian, and you had, a, you had some type of skiff with another Christian in the, in the church there, he would actually sue you and take you to the court to a judge and during all this deal that weren't Christians. So uh, whether it's a divorce thing, you couldn't, you know, you had some, some type of issue with another believer in the body, you would take them and you'd go to the go to the non-Christian world to judge that matter. And Paul's saying, oh my goodness. Here's the, here's the witness that you're presenting to the world. They're looking on and they're going, why would I want to become a Christian, man? You're, you're presenting this case over these, these, these circumstantial type things. Paul says, hey man, bring it before other believers. In today's society right now, in my heart for our church right here, here's the thing, we're human, man. You're going to have a rift with me, I'm going to have a rift with you. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. That's understandable, we're human. But when that transpires, let's deal with it within the body of Christ. Let's say, hey, Todd, you know what? I'm having a problem in my marriage. I don't know if this is going to last. Can we sit down and talk? And what? here's what happens. You give God a chance, number one, because we serve a God of grace and power that can take a marriage and completely revamp it. I've seen it happen if you'll give him the chance. Or I've been wrong, man. Do, you know, do, it was a bad business deal amongst two Christians. I'm out of here. And he says, no. We're not going that route. I want you to be able to present it to the church. We'll actually get maybe a Christian lawyer involved. It will, it'll be some, you know, not in, in the world's court system and have them judge that. Paul says, no, we can't do that because here's what's happening. It's the proverbial egg on Jesus' face, man. We're dirtying his reputation out in front of the non-Christian community. And they're looking on seriously for truth. And they're like, man, these dudes are all cat fights and all these dissension. Why do I want to be a part of that? I'm not down with that. So he's very strong in his position. Do you know in America today, I was doing some research on the internet, and in the last 40 years, this was in the New York Times, I think it was the American Bar Association that had done this, this study, and that lawsuits in America in the last 40 years have been increased by five times. You ever notice that? Like, Remember the, the, the case at McDonald's? You know, like homie like grabbed a cup of coffee and like sued McDonald's for the hot coffee. I'm like, dude, what do you think? Coffee's gonna be cold? I mean, homes, be careful. Like, put some cream and sugar in it, cool down a little bit, you know, then drink it. The homie's suing McDonald's for millions. I'd be suing him right back and go, dude, like, like, you know, chill it out a little bit, put some ice in it. I mean, come on, coffee's hot. But this litigation is increasing, it's increasing, it's increasing, and it's this worldly, you took advantage of me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spite you, and it's this, this, 